Faith and truth in today's world. Now that's something that's very important because it's being attacked on every side. Faith and truth in today's world. So let's look at today's world and see where it's going. See what is happening. See how things are coming about. Now here's an interesting picture. And this is one which depicts everyone as a technological saint. Having all the technology and making themselves gods. And here's another one. People are still interested in religion, so the Catholics are going to have for young people a great, great gathering in Portugal. So let's see what happens to that. But in the meantime, more people are not believing in God. When, with all the difficulties we have, they really should be seeking God. But, here's another article. Percentage of Americans that believe in God have fallen to an all-time low. Now, they don't make the connection between leaving God and all the troubles that we have. But that's the problem. In addition to that, there are a lot of people going to the temple of Satan. Okay. Now, that's all on the side of what is religion. And of course, we know that there's going to be a one world religion come about. Now, many people have not thought on this very much, but when you look at it and you understand it, it tells us an awful lot. Book of Revelation tells us that Satan is deceiving the whole world and also that they are worshiping him. So this is what we see in the world today, and this is the source of what is called wokeism. And that is following Satan's way. Now, Satan's got something else that is going to affect every single person in the world. And so, let's read that. Let's come to Revelation 13. Here's what's coming down the pike. Here is what they are working on. Hasn't quite yet come, but we are closer than any time in the history of mankind of this coming to pass. Revelation 13, verse 16. Now, this is a combination of the secular world and the satanic religion that's going to take over the whole world. So it's going to combine both worship of Satan, and a complete financial hold on every single individual. Just like the first picture showed, you will be a technocrat completely geared to the way of Satan. Now, here's what's going to come to pass. And he, that is the beast power that is coming in the world, and the beast power is what? The world government. Now, along that line, keep your eyes on the United Nations. They are on the sideline working up all kinds of laws and regulations that they want to apply to the world. And they are hoping for another pandemic where they can bring them in. Now, will it be another pandemic like we have with COVID? that was actually devised in the Wuhan lab in China. And speaking of that, we've got a 30-page copy 
of a speech given by a high, high level Chinese official in 2003. Now that's 20 years ago. Now I want you to read every page of that report. We have it online. Because one of the main things it says, we don't want to conquer with battleships and guns. We want to conquer with biological weapons. So they've been working on this a long time. And remember, Genghis Khan was the first one to use biological death by taking corpses of those who died of plagues and using a sling to throw them over the wall of a city and have the corpse explode when it hits the ground and all the germs spread out and people come down with the plague. Okay? So you read that report. Now, back to this. Back to the financial end of it. See, because there is the financial end, there is the, the medical end, and there is the religious end. And all three of those come together. And you will also see that they want total control of people. That's why in China, they're getting more and more cities where everyone is watched all the time. Okay? Now then, here's the perfect thing that will have total control of everyone who signs up for it. And if you don't sign up for it, you're going to be out of luck and you're going to be martyred. So we're looking at choices down the road, which are quite severe. Okay. And he causes all. Now, as I've mentioned many times before, when you come to all, circle it. The small and the great, the rich and the poor, the free and the bond, to receive a mark in their right hands or in their foreheads. Now that means when you're looking at what is happening, what are they trying to develop right now? They're trying to develop chips to insert into the brain. And they will soon come up with a chip to be inserted in your right hand or in your forehead. Okay? Now, once you have that, and this system is set up so that no one may have the ability to buy and sell. Now, the Seventh-day Adventists believe that the mark of the beast, which is what this is, okay, is Sunday keeping. That's not true. This says, unless anyone has the mark of the beast, he can't buy or sell, okay? Unless he has the mark and the name of the beast and the number of the name. How close are we to that right now? Well, a whole lot closer than people have imagined. Okay, so here's one. They're coming at it from different ways. Amazon is going to have in all of their stores and Whole Foods purchased by palm reading. Now, they'll probably have two lines in the stores to begin with. Those who want to pay with cash or credit card or debit card, and then those who will pay with their palm. Boop. Think of that. Now, that's not the mark of the beast because the mark of the beast has to be something put on in your right hand or forehead. But the palm reading, your palm can't be the mark of the beast. But what is it? 
it's a step toward getting to Mark. Okay? Now, here else is what is happening. Okay? The federal government right now is working on a digital currency. And a digital currency is this. They already have it perfected. Remember that Biden wanted to put on 87,000 more IRS workers? Well, they want them to enforce the digital currency. Okay? And it's called CBCD. That is CB, which then is central bank, CD, which then is digital currency. They have already perfected it. The Federal Reserve Bank already has it set up. And there are 32 major banks signing up for this digital currency. Now, if you have a smartphone, you can have the digital currency and you can go through and just pay. Boop. Now, that is the last step before the mark of the beast. So, and that's also called Fed Now. You will be able to transfer money directly from you to the other person. And just think how convenient that will be. Now, years ago, we talked about this, and we said what? They're going to develop it, and everybody be used to digital buying, and then they will say, we need to make sure that you are who you are. And the only way we can make sure that who you are is if you have the mark in your right hand or in your forehead. Okay? One other thing I need to add to it, which is taking place in Europe right now, okay, which is this. They are working out a system of buying and selling by taking a digital reading of your eyeball. Okay? So that all you have to do is look into this camera, and if your eyeball is digitized and already on record, it will recognize you and you can pay your bill without having to do anything to look in the, <laughs> in the camera. Hello! <laughs> and let, let me tell you what's happening with that digital reading of the, of the eye. Thousands right now in Europe are lining up to get their eyeball digitized so they can buy and sell. Okay. Now, Sweden has had digital payment for a long time. Estonia is the most digitized country in the world. Now, it's a very small country, but it just shows you what's going to happen. Now, have you ever gone someplace and you wanted to pay in cash? And they said, we don't take cash. Well, it's an illegal tender. We don't take cash. Do you have a credit card? Do you have a debit card? No, but I have checks. We don't take checks either. So you see, now what are you going to do? Here you are standing in line at the grocery store, and you have all the food you're going to have for a week or two, and you're going to pay for it. You want to pay in cash. And they say, we don't take cash anymore. I got credit cards. No, we don't take credit cards anymore. 
This is digital currency. Do you have a cell phone? No, I don't have a cell phone. Well, you can't buy, you can't sell, you can't get anything because you are not in the system. Now, once you are in the system, they can cut you off at any time for anything. And if all your money and everything is in digital form in a bank account, flick of a switch and you don't exist financially. You're a non-person. Now, you may have some food stored at home, but that's going to run out sooner or later, right? Okay. So what are we down to? We're down to, do you have faith? Okay. And truth? And are you willing to stand for it? Okay, so we will look at that. So, let's come to Luke 18. Let's see what Jesus said. He was looking at the time when he is going to return, and then he asked a question. Luke 18 and verse 8. So let's look at that. Let's look at the world. Let's look at ourselves. Let's see what we need to do, because we need faith and we need truth. And in the world, we're confronted with what? An avalanche of lies. The only hope that springs up is what they're doing to expose the Biden mafia group running the world. So the question is, can they bring them to tow Or will the Bidens win in the long run, like they tried to do with Hunter, to making him exempt and his father for any financial transactions in foreign countries? Now, why do you suppose they had that in the settlement clause? Because they knew that they have up to 50 million in bribe money that they have saved up over the years in offshore bank accounts, okay? Now, you take all of those lies, all of the financial things, and then you look at how many people believe in God and how many people believe in God the way that they should. How many people really want the truth? So Jesus asked this question, verse 8. He says, I tell you, he will execute vengeance for them speedily, that is, for the saints. Okay. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, that's his second coming, shall he find the true faith on the earth? Now, that's quite a statement. Think about that. On the earth. Okay. Now, the Greek is literally, will he find the faith, which then means the true faith on earth. Okay. So that's where we are today with all of this. Okay. So we will examine that. We'll look into it. Let's see what we need to do, how we need to do it, and that we can have faith and truth, and we need to stick by that. Let's come here, since we're in Luke, let's come to chapter 12. Let's see what Jesus said. Chapter 12. And it all has to do with this. It has to do with what we believe, how we believe, how we live, how we think, and everything like that. Okay? Verse 37, Luke 12. Now, here's what Jesus said. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes again, talking about his second coming, shall find watching. And that's what we need to do. That's why I bring out these articles. We need to watch the news. We need to watch what's happening. And also, 
we need to watch our lives. See? Now, the thing, thing is this concerning us. We need the love of God, the truth of God, and his commandments so that we live God's way. And we need his spirit to motivate us to do that. Okay? So he asked the question, when he comes, will you be watching? Truly I say to you, he will gird himself and will make them sit down and will come and serve them. And if he comes in the second watch or comes in the third watch and finds them watching, blessed are those servants. But know this, verse 39, if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have allowed his home to be broken into. Now you therefore be ready. See, we don't know anything about what's going to happen at any one time. That's why every day we need prayer, we need study, we need thinking on God's word. See, therefore be ready for the Son of Man is coming in an hour that you do not think. And how many times have we gone through that? And how many times down through the centuries that this has happened? Okay, another way of looking at it is this. Even if you're not alive at the time that Jesus returns, how does he come upon you? Okay? He comes upon you because you die. And when you die, you're going to have to be declared a faithful servant. Because like Milo pointed out, faithful to the end. Okay? So he says, verse 40, again, like we read in chapter 18, then Peter said to him, Lord, are you speaking the parable to us only or also to all? Okay. So then he says this, verse 42, and the Lord said, who then is the wise and faithful steward? Now, wise and faithful. Now, what is a steward? A steward is someone that administers his master's wealth for the benefit of the master. Okay? Now then, what is the spiritual wealth that God has given us, which is worth more than physical wealth? everything in the Bible and all the things for us, see? Who is the then the wise and faithful steward whom the Lord shall put in charge of his household to give to each one the portion of food in season, okay? Blessed is the servant whom his Lord when he comes shall find so doing of a truth. Now notice, faith and truth, right here. Of a truth, I tell you, he shall set him over all his possessions. Now, what is that? What is God going to give us? Now, you look out there and you see all the rich and you see all the famous and you see all of those with all of the wealth that they have and the power that they have and what they do and all of this sort of thing. And here we are, poor little people here, as the world would look at us, but we have the greatest and most precious promises. What possession is Jesus going to give to the saints? Okay, come back here to verse 33. Okay, so here is what it is. Same chapter, chapter 12, verse 33. Seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. 
everything of what? That God has promised to give you. Do not be afraid, little flock. So this shows we're not a big flock. We're not a big church. We're not part of the world. We're to come out of the world and not be part of the world. For your father delights. God is going to be so happy when the resurrection takes place, when Christ returns, and we all meet on the sea of glass, and we find out what our new name is, what our assignments are, because we're going to take over the world. See? We're going to take over the world. And we are going to run it according to the way that God wants it run. See? So that's why what we do now has got to be learning all of that and having faith and truth so we can endure to the end. All right? I'll have a whole lot more to say about faith and truth, so let's go ahead and take a break, and we'll be back in 20. Now let's continue on with the message faith and truth in today's world. Now, before we go on, we need to understand something else. How active is Satan, and how many places is he, is he working? Well, if he's deceiving the whole world, that means he's working everywhere, he and the demons, and all of those who will work with him. Now then, Last week, what did we cover? We covered that PETA is going to rewrite the Bible. And remember how they described clothing Adam and Eve? It says in the Bible that he killed a goat and covered them with the skins. PETA Oh, we can't do that to animals. Hemp and bamboo. Okay. Now, what do you think the rest of the Bible is going to be? What are they going to handle when they come to all the animal sacrifices? <laughs> huh? How, how's that going to be? Okay. And... What are they going to do with the command concerning clean and unclean meats, which God says these meats you shall eat, and the other meats you shall not eat? Okay. Well, what are the Chinese going to do with the Bible? The communist Chinese are going to rewrite the Bible. And they're also going to have Catholic advisors to help them. And remember some time ago that the Pope visited China? Okay. Now they like the Chinese system because they enforce everything. They make people bow to the state. Okay. So what are they going to do when they do the Bible? They've already started. And here's an excerpt from John, the eighth chapter. And this is where the woman was supposedly caught in adultery. Okay. And Jesus was writing on the ground, and he was probably writing, where's the man? Where's the man? Because how can you catch a woman in adultery in the very act if there's no man? Okay. So then they all left. And no one was there to accuse her. And Jesus said, does no man accuse you? And she said, no, Lord. Okay. Now, a lot of people think that this is mercy and forgiveness. It's not. It's a mistrial. No accusers. Because the Bible says you have to have two or three witnesses, right? They all left. 
So Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. Then what did he say? Go and sin no more. Well, what is the Chinese version of it? Rewritten John excerpt ends with, not with mercy, but with Jesus himself stoning the adulterous woman to death. Now that shows you the ruthlessness of the Chinese in their tactics toward other people. So when I told you you need to read that whole 30-page report that we have online, I mean you need to read it. And you will see that everything that they said 20 years ago is coming to pass. And they are doing it. And that's another reason why we need faith and truth today. Okay? How is it for us that we need to have the faith and the truth? Let's come to Titus, the first chapter, and let's see something. One of the qualifying things for anyone who is to be an elder, Titus, the first chapter. Now, this also applies to us because when we're resurrected and in the kingdom of God, we're going to be what? Kings and priests. Okay. So verse 9 applies to us as well. And especially with the word of God, holding steadfastly to the faithful word. Now that's something. That's why the canonization of the Bible by the apostles and a faithful version like we have today is necessary. Okay? according to the teachings of Jesus Christ, may be able both to encourage with sound doctrine and to convict those who are gainsayers. Okay. Now notice why. They had the troubles back there. Look at what we have today. Okay. For there are many rebellious and vain talkers and deceivers especially those from among the circumcision party. Well, they came along and they wanted to change the gospel. They came along and said, you need to keep all of the Jewish traditions as well as what you find in the book of Moses. Well, what did Jesus say? No, we're sanctified by truth. And that truth is the word of God. Okay. Now, let's look at what Paul wrote concerning those who would change the gospel. Let's come to Galatians, the first chapter. Okay. Now, think about this. Think about what the Chinese are going to do. They're going to point everything to the leader of the Communist Party in China, because that will be their visible God. Okay. Any other religion, anybody who believes anything else, boom, you're gone. You can't believe in the truth. Okay. Now let's pick it up. Galatians, the first chapter, verse six. All right. Paul writes this to the Galatians because, you see, people can become very gullible and very believing. Now, we need to believe God. We need to believe the Word of God. But we have to prove everything that someone else says. And we prove it by comparing it with the Word of God. So we'll take the Chinese translation there and compare it to the Word of God and find out what? It's a complete, absolute lie and fabrication. So if they finish their project within 10 years, then there will be a Bible which will destroy the gospel. So let's read what Paul wrote concerning that. Verse 6, chapter 1, book of Galatians. I'm astonished that you are so quickly being turned away from him who called you 
into the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which in reality is not another gospel, but there are some who are troubling you and are desiring to pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, that's what a lot of the Christianity does today. They pervert it, okay? Now, notice what Paul gave as a warning for those who do that, see? But if we, that means any of us apostles, or even an angel from heaven, well, that's up there a lot higher, should preach a gospel to you that is contrary to what we have preached, let him be accursed. All in capital letters. As we have said before, I also now say again, if anyone is preaching a gospel contrary to what you have received, let him be accursed. Now, why would they want to do that? See? Think about it. Well, the next verse tells us. Because they want to please people more than God. All right, verse 10. Now then, am I striving to please men or God? Now, notice how categorically that this moves anyone who would do these things away from God completely. See? Now, they like to all do it on the cover of love. Oh, we got to love one another. God loves everyone. Even, you know, God's love is unconditional. And if you believe in Jesus, then you're saved and everything is fine. No, that's not true. Notice what he says here. Now then, am I striving to please men or God? Or am I motivated to please men? For if I am yet pleasing men, I would not be a servant of Christ. See? So even if they come in the name of Christ, and they bring their lies and they bring their false doctrines, we must have faith in God and the truth of God to refute it. Okay? Now, let's look and see how that comes about. Let's come back here to Jeremiah 23, because it talks about in the last days that we will understand this. Jeremiah 23, because we're going to be seeing a flood of false doctrines, false gospels, false ministers, probably more than we ever thought would happen. Who would have thought that PETA, the Chinese, or whoever else is going to rewrite the Word of God to their own pleasure, okay? Seeking to please men, okay? Jeremiah 23, here we go. Jeremiah 23, 20. So this gives us a good understanding of how God views it. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he has executed, until he has performed the purposes of his heart in the latter days. That's us today. You shall understand it perfectly. Now, down through time, they could understand it, but not perfectly as we can today. Okay, so let's look at this. Verse 28. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell the dream. And a lot of people have dreams. Do they come from God? Well, if it is, here's the truth of God, keep God's way, keep his commandments, keep his Sabbath, keep his holy days. Yes, that, that is a dream from God. But they come along with licentiousness and say, I've dreamed a dream. And he who has my word, that's us. 
We all have the word of God, right? Let him speak my word faithfully. Now, that's the obligation of all elders and ministers and obligation to all of us in reading the word of God. What is the chaft of the wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets who steal my words, each one from his neighbor. Okay, so that's what we find. Now, isn't it interesting, the way the world is set up today, that all of the Christian messages, with the exception of few on Sunday morning, are all contained on two or three video networks, right? Yes. So, what does that do? If people don't want to watch it, will they hear it anyplace else? Will they hear it from someone? No. How are they going to hear it? See? Well, we have the internet today. Well, that gives us a good way to reach out to people. That is true. But how many other of the false Christian religions are on there as well? See? And how many of the Satanist things are on there? How many of the transgender things are on there? See, so we are really in a flood of satanic deception. Okay, now let's let's look and see how we can trust in the word of God and what we need to do. First thing we need to understand is this. Let's look at the word of God. Psalm 119. Now the whole Psalm 119 is a good one to study through because that will show you how God views all of his laws, all of his commandments, all of his statutes, all of his judgments, but we will just be focusing on the word of God, okay? Psalm 119, and let's come over here to verse 86. Psalm 119, verse 86. Notice what it says. Here's this word again, all, all. Now, if you come across a Protestant, and he believes in Sunday, ask him why he doesn't believe this. All your commandments are faithful. That means they work all the time. So if you are being led by the Spirit of God, what, what is it going to do? It's going to lead you in keeping his commandments. And they are faithful. Okay. All right. Let's look at another one. Verse 90. Just down a few here. Your faithfulness, that is God. Where does our faith come from? It comes from God. What is that? That's a fruit of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? Faith and joy and love, right? comes from God, see? And we are told to have what kind of faith? Have the faith of Jesus. How does that come? By having God's spirit, by have, knowing his commandments, okay? Your faithfulness is to all generations, okay? Now, there are others. That, let's look at another one here. Let's come to verse 38. Here we go. Now, this is quite interesting. If we're trusting in the word of God, when God answers, what does he do? Let's read it. Fulfill your word to your servant that you may be feared. Okay. Now, Let's look at another one. Let's come to verse 30. Just back here. Verse 30. 
I have chosen the way of truth. Now, notice that's what is set before us all the time. We have to choose. I laid up your judgments before me. Okay? So this tells us an awful lot. All right? Let's look at some of the Proverbs. The Proverbs tell us an awful lot about faithfulness and truth. And we'll look at some of the other things that God has for us. Okay? Book of Proverbs. Let's come to Proverbs 19, verse 3. Now, this is why we need to study the book of Proverbs as well as study the New Testament. Proverbs 19, verse 3. The foolishness of man perverts his way, and his heart frets against the Lord. See, if you don't have the truth, you're going to fret fret against the Lord, see? Yeah, that's verse 19. It says down here, verse 5, a false witness shall not be unpunished, and he who pours out lies shall not escape. So that shows that faithfulness of God and judgment and everything that he's doing. Okay? Now, that's the way we counteract everything in the world. That's why we have to have the Word of God written in our hearts and written in our mind so that we can keep our balance and keep our our way of the Lord in truth and in honesty. Now let's turn to Proverbs 15. Proverbs 15, verse 1. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up strife. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge rightly. Now, if you use it rightly, you're using it truthfully. Okay? But the mouth of fools pour out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Now, that's quite something. How does God do that? See? Well, we have a clue with that, that there are seven spirits of God that go throughout the whole earth all the time, seeking out those who are seeking him. All right, verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness in it crushes the spirit. Okay, this also tells us what? What is one of the big problems that people have today? Depression. Now, why do they have depression? Because they have nothing outside of themselves. And especially if they get mistreated and they don't know anything about God and they know nothing about the truth and they've never had faith. It makes it difficult for them to get along. And those kinds of words then really upset them and take them down. Let's come here and see some other things. Let's come to the book of Psalms. And of course, the Psalms are full of good things for us. Okay. Psalm 25. And this tells us why we need Faith and truth in the world today. Now, when you have the truth in your mind and you understand the word of God, when you see or hear or read anything that's contrary to the word of God, what is going to happen? You're going to recognize that what is being said or what is being written is not true. How else would you know unless you knew the truth of God? And all the commandments of God are true. See? But the Protestants and Catholics say, except the fourth one. Okay. And many others then follow after that. Okay. Let's come here to, to Psalm 25. Okay. Let's see how we're taught right here in this psalm. 
what we need to do and how it protects us. See, Now we're told, as we're turning to Psalm 25 in the book of Proverbs, that we are to guard the door of our mind. See, We have to be careful what comes into our minds. See, Now one way I protect myself from all of those things is that when I'm watching television, I have a little red button which says mute. And so I don't have to hear what they are saying or hear some of the silly music that they have and then have to spend a day or two trying to get it out of my mind because I heard the music. Now, I didn't want to hear it, but if I leave it on, then I will hear it. Okay, Psalm 25, let's begin right here in verse 1. Now notice, this is a good way to start every day. See, that's why prayer every day and study every day, because if we're to grow in grace and knowledge, we've got to do that all the time. Okay, verse 1. To you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in you. Now, why does a person trust in God? Because they have faith in God, they believe God, they understand what he has taught, so forth. Do not let me be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Yea, let none who wait on you be ashamed. In other words, this is praying for all the saints. And we need to pray for them, especially today. There are so many things that come along that assault us mentally and spiritually coming right into our homes. And I like to remember it this way. Whenever you turn on the television, what happens? The world comes into your home, correct? Yes. Now, same thing with all of these movies. Same thing with all, all of the, lot of the printed word that we see, okay? Let none be ashamed who wait on you. Let them be ashamed who deal treacherously without cause. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. See? Now, this is a daily operation. Every day. Lead me in your truth. Now, Jesus said what? Your word is the truth. What else did he also say that's important for us to understand? He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Now notice, truth is right between way and life. So the way to life is truth. Then he also said, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, very important. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. On you do I wait all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your tender mercies and your loving kindness, for they have ever been of old. Okay, then verse 7 is a good one to remember. What does the daily prayer tell us to do? First thing, our Father who's in heaven. Now, for all sacred namers, that's the name of the Father. There's no Hebrew name in the New Testament that describes the Father in any other name but Father. Okay? And we have direct relationship with him, with the Holy Spirit of God, whenever we get on our knees and pray, or even when we pray, if we're doing something during the day, 
and we need God's help, we need God's guidance, we cry out to him to help us and lead us, correct? So the next thing that we do, we say in that prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, on earth means everything God has said prophetically, and also on earth, that means into my life living on the earth. Okay? Then what is the next thing? Forgive us our sins. And then a little clause after that, as we also forgive those who sin against us. And remember, that's a key to overcoming. You can't have the love of God if you're holding grudges. Okay? So verse 7 says, Do not remember the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, According to your loving kindness, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he will teach sinners in the way. The meek he will guide in judgment, and the meek he will teach his way. See? So all of this we need in today's world. The faith and truth. All right? Let's go here to Psalm 26, okay? Verse 3. For your loving kindness is before my eyes. Now notice this next sentence. And I have walked in your truth. And that means the way that we live. We live by the truth of God in everything that we do. Okay, now let's look here in the Old Testament and let's look what God said. Let's come to Exodus 34, okay? Exodus 34. Now this is after the sin of Aaron in making the golden calf. And God said to Moses, now think about this. We're all here. Also, because of Moses. Because God was so angry that right in the face of God, right at Mount Sinai, that they would dare make a golden calf and bow down and worship it. So he told Moses, I'm going to destroy them all and I'll raise up a great nation from you. Now, what if Moses would have said, Lord, that's a good idea. (laughs) <laughs> okay. He said, oh, no, Lord, please, please let your presence go with us. And what did God say? All right. My presence will go with you. Okay. And then what actually happened? The tent of meeting where he was to meet God was taken out from the center of the camp to outside the camp. Okay. But God said that he would continue to deal with the people. Okay. So then Moses wanted to know, God, how am I going to know you're going to do this? Show me your glory. And God said to him, no man can look upon my face and live. But there's a rock up here, and it has a big cleft in it, and you get in it, and I will pass by, and you will see my back parts. God passed by him, and he said, The Lord God, gracious and merciful, loving kindness, and full of truth. And the truth of God is always there all the time in every way. Okay, now let's come to the New Testament and see what Jesus said. Okay, let's come to John, the eighth chapter. And this tells us how we get truth 
if we have faith, because the two go hand in hand. Okay, John the 8th chapter, and let's pick it up here in chapter 8. John 8, verse 25, who are you? And Jesus said to them, the one that I said to you in the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge concerning you. But he who has sent me is true, and what I have heard from him, these things I speak to the world. See, everything that Jesus said was true. But they did not know that he was speaking to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you, you yourselves will know that I am he, and that is God manifested in the flesh, and that I do nothing of myself, but as the Father has taught me, these things I speak. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, because I always do the things that please him. Now, that tells us what we need to do also, see? Verse 31. Now, remember, this was at the temple. Those he was talking to were those who were supposed to be those who believed him and were following him. But how were they following him? See? Not in truth, because we'll see it. Verse 31. Therefore, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if, there's another one of those circular words, if you continue in my word, and the word of God is what? Truth. You are truly my disciples, and you shall know the truth. Now, what does this tell us? The key to knowing the truth is having faith in Jesus Christ and believing him, right? Doesn't it say that? If you continue in my works, verse 31, in my word, you're truly my disciples, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Now, they didn't believe it. They thought because they were the descendants of Abraham that they were entitled Okay. No one is entitled. Okay. You have to answer the call of God and repent. All right. Now let's come here and see what Jesus said in John 17. Okay. John 17 tells us the whole story. And this is quite a very interesting thing. Because in John 17, he knew that he was just about ready to be arrested and carted off to the high priest. Okay? So, Jesus explains a lot of things here in John 17. And this is going to be the end result of truth and faith, or faith and truth in this world today, okay? Now, let's see what Jesus said in this prayer. Verse 6, John 17. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of this world. They were yours, and you have given them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, they have known that all things that you have given me are from you. That's quite a thing. That's quite a prayer. That's quite a response that they had. See? And I have given them the words that you gave to me, and they have received them, and have truly have known that I have come from you, and they have believed that you sent me. Now, believe is another word for faith. Faith and trust. Now, notice what he said. Notice 
the world's way of religion and the world's way of the coming one world religion is we're going to save all mankind. Well, no, you're not. Only God can do that. See? So notice his prayer. Verse 9. I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world. That comes later. See? So think about it this way. Every day, as you come before God through Jesus Christ, he is working on your behalf, talking to God about us and to help us, to strengthen us, to give us the faith and the trust. But for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All mine are yours, and all yours are mine, and I will be glorified in them. Then he says, now here is what God is going to do. The Father himself. Now notice this is a prayer of Jesus to the Father. For the disciples then, and as we'll see a little later, for all of us down to our our time right now. Then he says, I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I'm coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, those you have given me, so that they may be one, even as we are one. Okay? That's what God wants, see? That's why it's important in this age in the world today, when you have so many things coming against us from every side all around, that we are trusting in God, that we have faith in God, that we are living the truth and walking in it. Okay? Now let's continue on here. When I was in the world, I kept them in your name. Now that means to protect. Okay. I protected those whom you have given me, and not one of them has perished except the son of perdition, in order that the scriptures might be fulfilled. And now I'm coming to you. Jesus knew that he was going to be resurrected. Jesus knew what was coming, because all the prophecies in the Old Testament described everything that was going to happen to him when he was arrested and taken off to be crucified. So he says, now I'm coming to you, and these things I'm speaking while yet in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in them. I've given them your words. Notice again how many times it talks about the words of God. Okay, I've given them your words. Everything that Jesus taught came from the Father. Okay? That's why a red-letter Bible, trying to analyze what Jesus said, you miss an awful lot because it all comes from the Father. I've given them your words, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you take them out of the world, okay, but that you would keep them from the evil one. Now notice that's one of the parts of the prayer every day. And lead us not into temptation, but keep us from the evil one. Okay. And who is Satan after? He's got the world already, right? Yes, so he'd be after us. Now, verse 16. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Now, here is the key concerning truth. Faith and truth. Verse 17. Sanctify them. That means make them holy. Now, that holiness starts first in our minds with what? 
the Holy Spirit. And then the Word of God, which is holy. And the Word of God is faithful. And the Word of God, as we will see right here, is truth. Okay? Sanctify them in your truth. Your Word is the truth. Okay? Now, this is how we can live in the world and overcome the world and live our life the way that God wants. And we need truth and faith every day, and they're interchangeable. If you have faith, you will have truth. If you have truth, you will have faith. Okay? So all the things we're facing and the avalanche of lies that are enveloping this world at almost every level, this will help us to have peace of mind, to have stability, to understand how to conduct our lives, to understand what we need to do to grow in grace and knowledge. So always remember, faith and truth, that's what we need in the world today.